Hello everyone. How often have our users complained that they forgot their passwords? Today, we are going to take a deep dive into how to implement a password recovery service for your applications. My name is Ruben Boza and I'm a developer advocate for OutSystems. The flow itself is pretty straightforward. We go here, we click forgot password, we use our email, we click send instructions, we have a feedback saying that an email has been sent with instructions. And then once you receive the email, it does include a link with a token that allows your application to understand who has authenticated against this email. So it's able to recognize that user. So from here, we can just put a password and then you change the password and everything is okay. But even with just the flow functionality, there are some best practices that we should take into account. First of all, we shouldn't log the user immediately because we have already reset the password. We could be tempted to just say, okay, I'm just going to log the user. Another one is to always send an email confirming that the password has been successfully reset. So something like this, you send them in the email to confirm that the password reset was successful. If the email does not correspond to an account on your system, there's a little bit of discussion around if it should be done or not. You should nonetheless send an email saying that the user couldn't be found. Just in case your particular user is like me and has like four email accounts and he's never exactly sure which one he has used to register into your system. However, there's more to this than what meets the eye. And a good place to start is the OWASP best practices for recovering passwords using a token. In summary, your system should never reveal if a certain email is associated with an account or not. Right? So that's the most important thing. The second most important thing is that you should be able to implement some kind of brute force or anti-spam protection so that ill-intentioned user cannot spam emails of their friends or the people that he really doesn't like much. Also, the tokens should be generating using some kind of cryptographic secure method, something that makes them very hard to guess and very hard to predict what the next one will be. Those tokens should be single use. So once they are used, they should be completely discarded. And just in case the database gets compromised, they should be stored in a secure manner. Meaning someone steals your database, they should be impossible for them to reconstruct the URLs that allow them to reset user passwords. But you know what they say, code tells no lies, so let's go right in and dive into the code. We're going to start with the token create method. This is the basic one that allows you to create a token based on an email. So let's take a look at what is it doing. So first, it actually revalidates that the email has a proper format. This is the simple email validation from the platform. Then it validates the domain. It compares the domain from the requester application into a list of authorized domains. The reason for this is just that if a hacker somehow is able to spoof or influence the construction of that URL, he could actually send your email with a link pointing to one of his servers. And that would be bad because he would then have the token that will allow him to reset a password. Same thing for the module validate. So this is to validate if your module actually exists on the OutSystems platform. And the most important one, a system to figure out what is the user ID based on an email. Sometimes it will find the user ID. Sometimes the email is not associated with anyone and it will just return empty. The token generate is actually using the generate password from the crypto API. So inside the crypto API, you have the generate password, which is a cryptographic random generation. So fairly secure. And then we will use again the compute hash again from the crypto api that allows us to create a hash of the token this way we can save the token into our database and we won't be able to reverse engineer that hash back into the actual token finally if a token already exists right so if the user is trying to recover a second time we always delete the token we also delete the token once it is used and we create the new token if the user was actually found, we create the URL, 
If the user is not found, we don't create the URL. But this way, it will allow your application to figure out if the user exists or doesn't exist and decide to send the email with the URL or the email without the URL saying, this email is trying to access our website and we can't find a registered user under this email. For the password update itself, it's also fairly straightforward. We should revalidate the password, meaning does the password comply with all the requirements, the size, the complexity, etc., that you have implemented in your system. It then goes and fetches the user ID associated with the token. And then it will encrypt the password that the user just entered. Notice that this encrypt password is something that exists on the user's module. And it's not really an encrypt password, to be honest with you. It's a hash. It's a fairly complex hashing with salt of a password. Then again, from the user's module, we update the user saving its password. Finally, we are going to just delete this token. So the token was used and then we are going to completely remove it from the database. This service module, this password reset service, it is actually exposing three service actions. And by the way, folks, get used to service actions or service modules because Project Neo is coming, okay? So no more public methods. As I was saying, it is exposing these three methods. Two of them map directly to there. So the user token create points to the token create and the password update points to the password update. However, there is one more method that is just to validate if the token is okay. It will just get user by token, see what it returns. If the token is not found, then you have an invalid token. Not found or expired or something in between. Now, a quick word for the brute force and the spamming. When I'm creating a token, this token max request check is actually verifying how many requests have been made for a certain email. So after a certain threshold, which is inside the site property, it will start saying, okay, you have exceeded the maximum number of requests for this email, whether the user exists or not. And there's a cooldown period until you can request the recovery password for that email again. The next option is to actually prevent the brute force either from several different emails. So I'm preventing spamming different emails that don't exist on the database and also preventing attempting to figure out if a token exists or not. And in order to do that, I've created this IP verify method that will log the IP and count how many requests are coming from a certain IP. And then, of course, after a certain threshold, that's again on the site properties, will not exactly stop the request from coming, but it will just raise an exception and doesn't allow the service to continue until a cooldown period exists. And then you can restart requesting your password recovery again. Let me also show you what data exists on the tables of this service. So we have the authorized domains that can use this service or not. These ones that you see, these are just test domains that I use in my unit tests. This one is the IP logging. It has a bunch of IPs and then it figures out the max occurrences for each IP and then it has a cooldown period. Of course, these IPs with the dot are again tests resulting from the unit testing that I perform on this service. And finally, let's take a look at the user token where you can see the hash of the token that has been generating. So the token is not actually saved on the database. And then you have created on, expired on the email that is requested this token. If there is a user ID associated with that email or not, and the domain module page parameter in order to build the URL. And of course, the number of occurrences in order to prevent the spamming of the emails. In summary, let's take a look at the OWASP best practices. If you want more details, if you want to know a little bit more of what are the best practices around recovering passwords through emails or the use of tokens, they have a very comprehensive documentation on this. Also, there's an article in Medium that is talking specifically about this component service. And you can also find the component, the test units and the demo on the Forge under the password reset services. All of these links will be shown on the description below. So folks, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a like. If you didn't, well, give us a like anyway, show your support and be sure to subscribe to this channel. You know what you need to do now. 
You just need to go out and build those apps. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>